This channel is for immature audiences only. It is not for children, only for childish adults. We might play some video games that kids also like, but we say words like fuck and shit with alarming frequency and make crude, inappropriate, and morbid jokes all the damn time. Level Zero NPCs assumes no responsibility if your idiot spawn watches this and gets traumatized. Okay, in in all truth, is the game broken? <laughs> like, did we... Uh, I'm gonna load. I'm gonna load, because I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to have that... Uh... Like, I didn't even intend to save there, so it's probably for the best that I did. Um, I Yeah, especially, period. right? Score. Did we okay. uh, sequence break? I oh. didn't shut in my inventory again. Oh, there's a more button. That oh, was probably it's a more also. button. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel like this is a full inventory. It's like, this feels like there's more space for inventory here on the right. I right? agree. Like, Oh, uh, look what! Look at that, everybody! It was in the more tab. In the their more defense, tab. the more tab does really expand the amount of gameplay they can do, and it's, it's a pretty true. big word, more. But Luke is right. I I feel like there was room for that shuffle. <laughs> yeah, I agree. With the gritty determination of a professional grave robber, you toil on. And uh, on. At, the, at, at the risk of infuriating Matt, I have a sports anecdote that I think Matt will like. Okay. So it's an open most grave. The... Hold on, let me read this first. Even Go in a world where he's seen it all, pharmacists like yourself, one who deals with cold sores, headaches, and diarrhea on a daily basis, still can't shake that uneasy feeling that one gets when standing close to death. Woo! You carefully search through the many pockets of the grave's three dollar suit until you discover the safe deposit box key you entrusted to fill so many years ago. I really should be doing this, like, and actually going and finding the things that, that clue me in to do all this stuff. Score. You grab a handful of clay from the pile beside the grave. Well, you never know, it could come in handy. Back when most graves were dug by hand, do you think the grave diggers ever had the perverse desire to lie facing upward at the bottom of the grave? Oh, Probably. yeah. Oh, you gotta I, imagine I they lot. try it. I would imagine a lot, yeah. Because you're tired, too. And, like, that's a hot sun and it's kind of nice and cool underground, so you just lie there and kind of contemplate the, you know, nature of existence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's probably okay. therapeutic in a way. All right. So, yes, tell us your your sports story. So, as we discussed last episode, I, like, I hate sports so much it's difficult to be polite. And any sporting event I've participated in or spectated is generally so boring it's like going insane. Um, <laughs> almost to the point where that's the recreational value. I'm just sitting there watching the hockey and I'm like, oh my god, it, like, is this forever? Is this the rest of my life? But um, I work for this... Uh, this weird web development company or a, like a branch off of it that was making children's educational games. And it was weird because they had like so much money. It was a weird company to work for. Um, it was weird to watch like a couple of crazy entrepreneurs just throw millions of dollars around and accomplish nothing. Anyway, that's a whole other set of anecdotes on its own. But we got box seats to a figure skating thing just out of the blue one day. It's like, hey, we all got box seats to like talk business and watch figure skating. And I guess the figure skating tournament was a pretty big deal. Um, uh, it was people who they I think they were like one step below the Olympics or something like that or going on to nationals. These are people making or breaking their career. And so we're sitting up in the box. We're not down in the bleachers with all the, the serfs. Um, and like there's a bunch of like catered food coming in. And uh, so we're just like eating like rich, delicious foods that are infinite in supply and everyone has drinks. And we're watching these people figure skate. And so many of them fell. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just amazing to watch someone. Just just to watch someone's dreams just die there on the ice. Uh. <laughs> like a few of them didn't fall. But fucking so many of them did. And just sitting there comfortable and warm and relaxed and eating food. And just in real time, in real life, through a thin pane of glass, <laughs> watching someone's dreams fucking shatter. Like, because, like, it's it's like it's like dropping an egg on that ice, right? It's just as unrecoverable. And, like, watching just, they, they get back up and they finish the routine even though it's pointless because they fucking fell. 
Oh, like, I, I've never had that much grace or courage to get back on my stupid skates and continue skating in circles and dancing as if it mattered. Oh, oh man. It was incredible. I've never experienced anything like that before. I, yeah. That, yeah, that sounds brutal. Like, th- like... If you if you're playing hockey and you fall down, you get back up and it's fine. But if you're a figure skater, like like you're only going to be 21 for that one year. And then the next year you're going to be just a little bit older, but the next guy he's still 21. How are you going to be a figure skater? Like if you fall down on that ice, you just don't go to the Olympics. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah, I I I've never I been so say. relaxed and so stressed in my whole life. Oh yeah, that must be so stressful. God, not to not to speak ill of or like um say that I I have any negative sort of feelings towards uh, figure skating, but I don't really consider it per se a sport. I don't know, like. It feels like a sport is more, I don't know, something competitive. I mean, it's absolutely got the physical aspect of it, right? But, like, you know, moving houses is, isn't a sport. Well, I mean, right? I mean, they don't necessarily call regular dancing a sport. Why is ice dancing a sport? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's harder. <laughs> I, I don't know why it is a sport. Um, I agree that it is kind of more of a performance, except that people are, like, ranked. Like, for whatever reason, it was a competition that I was watching, and the winners were going to go on to the Olympics, and I guess because it's in the Olympics, it's a sport. Why people feel the need to, like... Because, again, like, with regular dancing, there are dancing competitions, I guess, but they're not in the Olympics, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. I don't really know from the Olympics. But yeah, I don't, I don't know be. why I it is a sport it except either. that. That almost seems harder, though. Because, again, if you're in a basketball game and you fall down, that's not necessarily that big a deal. People fall down during regular sporting events. Um, Entirely true. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty important not to fall when you're a figure skater. Yeah. I mean, like, it is it is a very cool skill. Um, I don't know. I just, like... You know, I I don't know why I have feel the need to gatekeep what a sport is, but like <laughs> no, it's it's it seems so subjective, right? Especially like, yeah, especially us shouldn't do. That. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, like I, like I see what I you would... mean. Like other sports have like rules. It's like clear that like I I guess what it is is that figure skating must have rules that are just as arbitrary that are imposed on it and. Yeah, I mean, certainly somebody is ranking them, but I don't know. Like, I don't know what things are, like, how many points a triple Lutz is worth, or, you know, maybe that is exactly it. Maybe each of these specific moves has a points value, although you'd feel like if that was the case, then they would just do the most uh, high-value move as many times as possible in the time allotted. So, obviously, there's (laughs) some... They just come out and they just keep doing quadruple axles over and over again. They do like a thousand yeah. of them. There's no music. It's just I, silence and spinning. I think, I think the problem is, is that when there's artistry involved, you have a problem with considering it sports. But I think a lot of sports people would say there's artistry involved in a lot of sports. I don't know. I, it, seem, it seems more subjective, but maybe it's not if you're way into it. I don't know. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's piss off Matt Somebody even more by asking. The, yeah, if if you know more about figure rules. skating and you know why it's a sport, let us know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you know how how to rank a figure skating routine accurately without subjectivity, uh, and um, may- maybe a couple falls know. aren't a big deal. Uh, it's just that it, I mm-hmm. I don't know enough about figure skating to tell you what it was, but it was a step before something. It was a qualifier for something that sounded pretty important and. Yeah, a bunch of them. A bunch of them fell. A couple of I'm them not, pretty if bad. There was a, <laughs> if there was a figure skating routine that was just 180 quadruple axles, would that be a dominating routine? It would be impressive to I see. I want to know. Oh, yeah. It yeah. might get tiresome after a while, 
But like, you know, I mean, like, is it like, you know, there's diminishing returns on point values for moves? Like if you've done it once, it's worth less the next time around, like playing SSX tricky. You know, it's like you've already done that move. Try a different one, you know, hold left on the trigger instead of right or whatever the uh, analog stick. I don't um, know. I'm maybe I'm, I'm cool not knowing I'm, nor understanding. <laughs> I'm willing to be convinced of the sportitude of figure skating. What I'm, I'm not willing to be convinced of the sportitude of is golf. Fuck everything about that bullshit. <laughs> I've watched. I've watched. Actually, I have watched figure skating on purpose. I've done that. Yeah, I've, I've done that. I've yeah. watched figure skating on the Olympics. Is that it's, is that how we know it's not a sport? <laughs> because <laughs> we're willing to engage with it like yeah <laughs> I, I i get why golf is a sport like you can count like you're trying to get the stupid ball in the stupid hole in as few swings no, as possible golf is a game golf is not a sport oh yeah no okay that's that's fair i understand the rules of the game you're trying to hit the ball into the stupid little hole you're trying to do it in as few swings as possible this is golf yeah you, yes. you can you can count the swings there's probably other rules that i don't care enough to understand I understand how one wins or loses at golf. I know basically how that works. I don't really on a deep level understand who wins or loses uh, in figure skating. But one thing that I respect about it, people fall in the Olympics. Like people mm -hmm. get all mm -hmm. the way to the Olympics because they're the best in their country at figure skating and still fall down on the ice. That must be so hard to do. Like, you'll watch another sport, like, you know, the long jump or something, and that's just a bunch of people all doing the same thing. And as a layperson, like, I have no idea what the difference is. Or, like, fucking diving. Diving is boring, because it's just a bunch of people doing things that, to me, are indistinguishable. But I know when I'm watching diving figure skating... Diving is, like, really fast figure skating. <laughs> yeah. But in, in, like, in, like, figure skating, they all do something different, and some of them challenge themselves so much, they fuck it up in front of the whole world. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, fucking up in front of the whole world. Hey, we uh, if we're gonna continue doing this, do you want to do some pharmacists at least? <laughs> let's uh, before yeah, Matt let's, quits let's the go. show. It's <laughs> <laughs> not what I signed up for, guys. So I'm I'm here. It's fine. I'm you know I'm a team player. I'm a participant. You know, most of the time. You know, it's actually really hard to torment Matt. But, but it's day, possible. He's, he's, he's an easygoing fellow. It's really hard to... Oh, yeah. Okay. First of all, uh, Idris did confirm uh, that their home have unpacked most boxes and currently are not a skeleton. <laughs> uh, so we appreciate that. Thank you for that's confirming. Great. That's great. And I'm still glad you're going to give... Uh, the the uh, audiobooks a uh, a try. Uh, I will say, Idris, you are a skeleton. You've just got more on you than only. You're that. just not only a skeleton. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so here's the pharmacist. Uh, all all people are skeletons. Not all skeletons are still people. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that's some wisdom. Uh, so, as Australia is heading into winter, I find I am in need of good winter warming recipes. What is your favorite Ooh. meal for a cozy winter night? This is particularly good because we're Canadian. And we're yeah. known for our fucking winters. God, are we. It's true. We're going to get fewer of them as we get older because, uh, you know, boomers. But... You know, honestly, <laughs> we've got we've got them. We've got some recipes. Anybody want to go first? Uh, I will only to say that while I am a very omnivorous person, I'm I'm a pretty terrible cook. I cook really boring food where I just throw like meat and vegetables in a pan. So I'm useless in this category. I mean, okay, but what what is the, what is your favorite thing to eat on a winter night? Hmm. You know? uh, oh yeah, I'll, I'll think about like uh, my 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 dad makes a very meaty like chili con carne. That was one of his like winter time dishes where it's just like he put everything everything in, from the fridge into a crock pot, 
and then he he would make a like a a ridiculously meaty chili. <laughs> uh, yeah, it sounds nice. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll 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 warm the bones. It'll 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 entice you to just roll over and sleep until spring. <laughs> that sounds great. It's also it's like uh, you can take a very maximalist approach to making a chili, right? You can just put anything that you find in the cupboard. My dad was a big fan of using dulse flakes on everything, including his chili. But like. Hmm. It's one of those dishes where you can kind of just empty the cupboards into it, and it'll still be edible when you're done. So, yeah, that'll that'll be my phone. A, a really heavy chili. Yeah, okay, fair, fair. Yeah, yeah. Luke? Um, like, I, I could, like, go all in and, and give you a full-on recipe if you like. <coughs> it's not a, um... It's not a, strictly a winter dish. Um, I would make and do frequently make it throughout the year. Um, but uh, there is a, a recipe for... The recipe itself was listed as a uh, as a tikka masala. Um, but like a simple, like easy to make kind of like pre-made... Um, some, well, so it, it's based around a, like a can of tomato soup, which is really interesting. But it's a it's a it's a damn fine uh, curry, you know. Um, despite the fact that I'm sure it is not made in in a, at all uh, Indian way, but uh, yeah, like um, I I make my own sort of curry paste by mixing sort of equal parts of garam masala and cayenne pepper and um well chili powder uh you know mixed with water and then mixed together until it becomes sort of a paste you want to um take some like uh, cardamom pods and some cinnamon you want to sort of um pre-fragrance uh oil in a pan and then sort of sear some chicken or your protein of choice sometimes you know you could do some uh shrimp or something like that in there um and then uh you want to sweat and uh almost even caramelize some uh, like one large onion um and uh, add in as well some uh, minced um ginger and chopped garlic uh you know i'm i'm from or i i spent a large portion of my uh young adulthood in gilroy california so no amount of garlic is too much um then sort of once you've sort of let all of those flavors get to know each other, then you take a, a one full sort of normal size can of uh, Campbell's tomato soup, pour that right in there um, together with the uh, rest of the uh, ingredients. Um, add in just a touch of brown sugar to even out the, uh, the heat of the uh, curry paste. Um, you can like introduce more cayenne pepper, more garam masala, and stuff like that into the, the mixture um, if you feel so inclined. Um, then you add in that protein, you let it all simmer up together for quite a while, keep it stirring. Um, and then, like, you know, I don't have a tandoor, so I'm not making like homemade naan. I'll just buy like a, ba a package of naan from the grocery store. But yeah, eat all that shit together. It's, it's damn fine. Damn that fine, sounds uh, good. Winter meal or, or summer. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it does. It does. I like that. That sounds great. And now you can make it just by playing back that audio. Yeah. Because we're not going to write it down. We're just not. I may or may not have missed something. Because like, I went through that pretty quick. Yeah, that's fine. What's What's yeah. fun about this exact moment in time is that Matt is like still a little angry that we were talking about sports. Like He hasn't digested all of that yet. More, more than a little. More than a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This it's is the sports just, and cooking episode it's, it's, of. It's spilling Ready over into everything else he's trying to participate oh, in. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. It's been a long week. Okay, all, all right, all right. I've got, I've got three. I've got three. Okay. Ooh, three. So, all right. Well, well Let's see. Go. I mean, I mean. Okay. So technically, so like my um, both my mom and my wife make uh, like weirdly. I see. My my wife never met my mom because my mom died before uh, we got together but they have a weirdly similar beef stew uh and i think that's just because that's what you do so i i really like a good beef stew with like biscuits and stuff on the side uh it's uh, oh man oh man with like carrots and 
turnips and chunks of beef and like a slightly thicker gravy. Oh God, love that, love that. That's my winter meal of choice if I had to choose. Uh, chili's chili's very good too. Um, but I think uh, as for what I make, the thing I make in the winter, and I associate this with winter the most because uh, I, I usually make it. Um, for uh, our anniversary and for Valentine's Day, which is our anniversary is in September and Valentine's Day is still, from what I can tell, in February. Um, so I kind of associate it with winter, but it's a champagne chicken where it's like a French champagne and mushroom sauce that's made with champagne, of course. And it's a cream sauce and it's just, it's mind fucking blowing. Uh, on egg noodles <laughs> it's it's one of my favorite things like i could we could bottle and sell that sauce and people would just people would pay whatever they they'd sell their children for it <laughs> it's 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 that good it's so good it's one of my favorite things um even my daughter who doesn't like food loves that sauce <laughs> she's just like she won't eat anything she just doesn't no, she, like food she has loftier concerns yeah but she just loves she loves champagne chicken, so uh, it's so it's so goddamn good. And um, uh, my dad used to make a macaroni casserole back in the day, which is just it's like a goulash, right? It's just like hamburger and uh, macaroni and vegetables, and then you add like tomato soup, and you add and you can get this, you can get this cheddar cheese soup campbell's makes cheddar cheese soup and you just mix that in with the tomato soup it's next level guys it's next level uh, i am both like I'm, I'm i'm not ashamed to say both like white enough and north american enough that a casserole does touch a very important part of my soul well ca- ca- <laughs> casseroles are really important in the winter right because like you, you make them once you make them on a fucking weekend and then you just you go for like three four days just eat that just yeah, I just have that. You it's, know, it's it's like it's like I I like I said I, I like all sorts of things. I love spice and I love, but like there's something just heartwarming about a casserole, you know? <laughs> yeah, and it's perf it's perfect winter time stuff. So, in on those cold nights, make yourself a casserole. That's what I would say. Just like, like a big casserole, tell yourself you're going to put it, half of it in the fridge, eat it all anyway, and just knock yourself the fuck out for the night. That's how you get through a cold winter's I, evening. I tell you. That's the Canadian experience well, right That's there. the Canadian experience, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, just put anything in a pot with with a liquid and just cook it. Put some Big Macs and some cream of mushroom soup and put some breadcrumbs and cheese and throw it in the oven. <laughs> I bet that would work if you just took a if you took a bunch of fast food and some cans of Campbell's soup and some breadcrumbs and combined those just artfully into a baking tray and put it like I'm not saying that would be a great experience but it would probably be by the standards of a casserole a success. Yeah, yeah, maybe not maybe not a Big Mac because you don't want the lettuce in there, but like maybe a quarter pounder. You if know. you line the bottom of that with McDouble, smother that oh, in yeah. I smother that in equal parts Campbell's <laughs> tomato and Campbell's cheese soup, right? And then cover that in breadcrumbs um and put it in the oven, it would be edible. The like, game would come out it would like yeah, it, that would be an edible substance when it came out. Yeah. Also a good it's lasagna from- a good lasagna is good, but like don't make it because it's so intensive and it's it's never worth the time it's, oh yeah it, that was uh my, my dad would make a lasagna you could use to break down a door with <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, could, you could fend off an intruder with his cooking <laughs> my uh my mom made, made a good lasagna i am reminded uh from your talk about like fast food at the bottom of a casserole dish um there's a, a japanese show that i like to watch quite frequently called uh, gaki no ya hende and they have a, se- a segment that they do very rarely um but one of the but this segment basically is like they'll take a sort of traditional japanese dish and challenge each member of the team there's sort of five regulars um to come up with some new sort of avant-garde way to prepare this dish or a thing to put in this dish 
and the episode of uh, Japanese nabe, which is basically like winter uh, stew in a clay pot, basically. Um, and one of them came up with, um, they called it the American nabe. Um, and it was basically like you know, the nabe soup base. And then they threw in like hot dogs and burgers and french fries <laughs> and they like squirted a whole fuck ton of like ketchup and mayonnaise into it wow and then they like yeah it looked horrifying oh. and i bet it tasted just as bad yeah that actually reminds me of one of my new favorite winter dishes from the last few years which is uh uh kimchi jjigae which is just kimchi stew mm. and just so good yeah so goddamn good uh I yeah, that'll warm your heart. It's yeah, it, and it's easy to make, you know. Really, any Korean food, especially in the winter. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Any kind of jjigae. Um. Yeah. Any kind of soups. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Um. All right. Yeah, that was good. Thanks. Thanks, Idris, for that. And I hope we all made you hungry. I am reminded of one more winter dish, if I may oh, indulge Oh, please, please, please. Here, um, that I realize that I have not made in, like, over a decade at this point, which is too bad. Um, but when I was in university uh, studying in Japan, uh, there was another uh, foreign exchange student um, who also went on to uh, enter the university like I did, <coughs> named Chenda, who's from a company, uh, who's from a country called Bhutan. Um and uh, he taught me how to make uh, what's called imatatsi, uh, which is a it's like a cheese chili uh, stew of sorts, and it's real simple to make, right? It's basically just like you you add butter in a pan and add like onions, some chopped up tomatoes, some chilies, um, and then like salt them a little bit, and then like. Um, you add like a whole shit ton of cheese. Um, it was like, you know, I guess traditionally it's supposed to be like yak cheese, but like, you know, feta and, uh, and like grated cheddar, grated farmer's cheese would be fine. Right. Um, and you add a little bit of water to it. Um, and that's it. And some garlic. And that's like all you need to do. And it's fucking amazing, dude. Like, um, he would make that in like the winter and it would be like the two of us. We're just like sitting in the dorm, um, just confusing the rest of the Japanese students uh, coming around us because of like this spicy, cheesy soup that we were eating. It's good stuff. That sounds it does great. Sound good. Yeah. So it's almost like a queso. It's like just fucking eating queso. That is great. Nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm no, down with that. All. Again, I, you can buy cheddar cheese soup in a can. <laughs> So it's just, yeah, exactly. It's that's what I, that's what reminded me of it. That's like a oh, shit. I was like you know, imadatsi. That's like yeah. It's it. I think that as actually means cheese and chilies. That's great. I might be wrong. Might be the other way around. But that sounds that sounds delightful. So uh, there's yeah. a whole shit ton of winter recipes, which I know you know totally. Most of our most of our uh, audiences in the northern hemisphere and things are just warming up and uh, catching on fire. But it, still, you know. We, you can eat a lot of those anytime, you know. Just it's it's still early. It's early. <laughs> um, and uh, fun for Algernon, pharmacist. Uh, oh, wait. Hold on, I got it. I got it. I guess we don't normally do it each time, but you know, I had it queued up. It's so. gonna be. This is. I mean, I said we said this was gonna be a shorter show, but not if we stand in the middle of the street. And 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 talk for the whole we got time. so much accomplished. We did. Oh uh, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. In in spite of ourselves, we did. Uh, fun for Algernon, pharmacist. Uh, all this talk of the Sierra Network reminds me of BBSs and BBS text games. I love Seth Abel's mm-hmm. Lord so much in 1994 and 95. Did you guys use BBSs in your youth? I did. Quite a bit. And I'm very well familiar with Legend of the Red Dragon, or Lord. Um, point where I, I distinctly remember striking out with Violet on a daily basis. Uh, <laughs> because I didn't understand how the mechanics of the game really worked. Um, the uh, the settings for Lord on my local BBS, there were like three BBSs that I would regularly uh, go to. Um, one called uh, Atlas. BBS, which turned into a major ISP in, in uh, California, if my memory serves. 
um, and uh, Groovy, uh, which is where they uh, where my buddy Link, uh, who ran Groovy, uh, hosted all his porn. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> good old Link's porn. Yeah, Link. Well, Link is not actually his name. He went by Link and F Stern, which is a heavy metal reference. Right. Um, we would all just call him Link. I think his re- I think his real name is Ryan, actually. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I played Lord. Of, I think both of those uh, BBSs, and I was bad at, in both cases. I also played a lot of Muds and Muxes back in the day as well. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely. That that was my whole jam. That was what I was doing before there was internet. <laughs> you know, otherwise. I I had the opportunity to join some BBSs and I just never did. And you know, it's funny there was a local one um that I got on a couple times, but it was like nobody was saying anything interesting and they were all people I knew anyway and it was just like what 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 is the point of this? What is, but uh, I'll tell you when the internet came along, that's when I really jumped on the uh, I didn't get into the BBSs. I just got into like um crazy old school chat rooms like um wbs and i went into the role playing chats where there it was glen shadows tavern where i don't know if anybody remembers this but there was like this huge like community of people that would go on to glen shadows tavern and you just role play your character on there and you'd say what they're doing and then you talk with other people and I was it was great it was wild I was uh, I was really that's the nerd that's the nerdiest thing I would do back then but I, the BBS is no I, I I sort of missed out on that I was not that was not my that was not my jam I also am not super familiar with it I'm a well, weird like I'm a weird like demographic because like I'm I'm older than the rest of the gang here but like also like I amused myself when I was young by like building little houses out of moss and rocks in the woods for gnomes <laughs> like that was that was that was the type of like poor that my family was <laughs> yeah i mean I'll, I'll, yeah i mean the internet was fully formed when you were a child almost yeah, yeah. Al- alex said he was older than the rest of the gang he meant he was younger by like a decade oh <laughs> yes yeah sorry i i'm older i'm old of spirit young of body i, I did mean to say yes. younger just there um, yeah, I mean, you're also an ageless, uh, you know, cosmic horror, but... Yeah, there's not know. much to keep us occupied out in space. That's why I'm so fascinated yet repelled by these activities on the screen right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the, uh, yeah. So th- there there it is. I, I, I didn't really BBS. I, 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 I would have loved to. I think I would have been into it, but... The compulsion to interact with other people online has always been alien to me. I've never for one second in my life appreciated the appeal (laughs) anytime i'm doing something and i see another like i'll be playing like no man's sky or something and i'll go to the nexus and i'll go in and it loads up and like a bunch of people come up and someone comes up to me and asks me to join their party for a quest and i just turn off multiplayer so they all go away and it's just me alone in the space station (laughs) i think the thing that that i liked about um like MUDs and BBSs and stuff like that back in the day is it was such a small community that like a- there wasn't much anonymity, you know, like everyone kind of knew each other yeah. and someone new like became kind of part of that small community very quickly. Um, like the, the MUD that I went to, I think was one of the biggest MUDs possibly in North America, but that might had just be, you know, what everyone thought it was this place called the realm, um, you know, and uh like it felt sprawling but there were actually not i think that many people like i think you know cap at like 50 people a day or something like that um you know when i was actively playing it um but like yeah muds were basically just like D uh without needing gms and muxes even more so because like you were kind of more expected to do uh role playing although it was via text um, I was ex- especially into those uh, in my university years when I was in Japan and kind of uh, a far, far away from the rest of Western civilization. Um, so it was a, a good way for me to like uh, interact with people sort of regularly in my native language. Yeah, that's fair. And I mean, that was actually true in the early days of the Internet, too, right? Like you could mm-hmm. you could get on forums and there'd only be like 100 people there and then they'd be all the same people. 
Uh, yeah. It was all, it was great. Those early days, oh, those early days. <laughs> My, uh, I was never really on, on Usenet or anything like that. It was always like smaller local BBSs and MUDs, but sorry, go ahead, Alex. Um, I was going to say, I, I think I've mentioned it before, my uh, brother and I back in high school uh, played an old, uh, somewhat obscure Korean RPG called Ragnarok Online. Um, oh, yeah. yeah which yeah. was a, a formative gaming experience for the both of us. And uh, what was interesting about it is that, by and large, the other players on the server would just leave you be to just run mm -hmm. around hitting slimes with a stick or whatever. Um and it, anyone who didn't leave you alone was usually pretty nice. They'd be like, oh, you can go over here and you won't get eaten by that thing. Or can you throw these potions at me while I try to kill this bear? Like it was it was pretty chill for the most part. I don't really recall having any bad experiences with it. Um, it, was, it was pretty pleasant. That's probably the one where I like, I could see how this would be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, my one experience with Ragnarok Online was uh, the first day of the open beta um like being stuck in the waiting room to exit into the rest of the world because there were so many people logged on at once and there was no like instancing or anything like that it was just like hundreds and hundreds of people in this cramped area where there were like five to like 50 people stacked on a single square in the game so uh, I never really sort of returned after that because, like, okay, well, this is a fiasco. My first experience in Ultima Online uh, was <laughs> uh, was a uh, was one of those sort of experiences that I think has ultimately began to sour me on sort of uh, playing with randos. Um, first time playing the game, made my character, and at the beginning of the your experience playing Ultima Online, um, first time accounts would get. A, a trinket, a thing would just be kind of given to you. You get to choose what it was. Um, and I chose because I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep my hairstyle. There's this basically like free haircut card thing. And the first thing that happens when I step out of the sort of starter area is some dude comes up to me. He's like, hey, what did you take? And I was like, a uh, haircut card. He's like, can I like, to, can I trade that for me, from you? Can I have that? And I'm like, I guess. Like he gives me, what, like, I don't know, fifty coins or something like that, some pittance. And like, as soon as it goes into his hands, he's shouting. Like I can see his words above his head. Like you know, haircut card. Like you know, eighty eight hundred times the amount he gave to me for sale. Come to blah. I was like, okay, well, apparently I just gave away something of value. So that's a learning experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh the reason my level zero avatar is an alchemist is kind of an homage to the fact that i always played an alchemist in ragnarok online um mm. which was the upgrade from the merchant class i would always start out as a merchant because it had a cart you could just fill your cart with heavy shit and then beat monsters to death with it it was great but with the, the cart nice the the as a merchant you could also set up a shop and sell things and whenever i got anything i would just go to the main town uh, set up shop next to someone else who was selling the same thing and just f infuriatingly undercut them in price. Because I didn't really care <laughs> about being a merchant. I just wanted to get some coin and offload my stuff. So I would just sell the same thing for way, like, destructively cheaper and then run away. <laughs> destructively cheaper. <laughs> I mean, like, I didn't have a lot of inventory, right? I would sell out almost immediately, and then when I logged back on, it would be gone. But it was a fun <coughs> mechanic. Like, uh, most people had a merchant character that they'd use to sell their shit. But that was my only character. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, fun um, for Algernon commented on both both videos and uh, posted my favorite comment um, uh, maybe ever on the channel, which was just... The lion is Jeebus? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. No. We were talking about Narnia last Narnia. time. Narnia. Yeah, yeah. The, the, and, the lion is Jeebus. Yes. And how uh, Julia didn't remember anything from any book past uh, *Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe*, and Spivey had a bisexual awakening with the queen. <laughs> So you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you're you're both very right, uh, Spivey. Um, uh, uh, Jadis, the Empress of Narnia, is probably one of the more fuckable characters in the narrative. Uh, <laughs> it's very true. Absolutely. Way more than Aslan. Um, oh, yeah. More, well, uh, in some circles. Not, 
Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, I suppose it depends on who you ask. Um, and, uh, Julia, the voyage of the Don Treader is about a ship called the Don Treader, but I do like Don Treader as a name for a pirate. Old Don Treader. And unfortunately, there is a Prince Caspian. I'm just kidding. Caspian's fine. He's boring. He's fine. He's fine. Don, I think Don Treader's the one where, like, the guy gets turned into a dragon and there's a rat named Reepicheep. Yeah. It's a pretty good story, I guess, as such things go. <sighs> yeah. It's harder it's harder to pin it down as religious propaganda, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's he, a plus in its favor. No, it's true. Yeah. He sort of he sort of got caught up in the actual story for a while there. <laughs> and then at the end he was like, Right, I gotta bring this around to Christianity again. Right. I gotta make it clear <laughs> that Susan's going to hell. <laughs> Love it. Um yeah, you know, hey, look, guys, we love all your comments. We might, we might, we love them the appropriate amount, I think. Uh, yeah. Sp- Spivey, I, I really appreciated your, your comment about Narnia. Like, I, I just took me right back, like, the, uh, like, <laughs> like, referencing the ma- magician's nephew brought me back to, like, the silver chair, and, like, fucking puddle glum, the marsh wallow. <laughs> <laughs> ah, great. Love it. <laughs> Calling out C.S. Lewis for like uh fictophilia for his own characters when he's like, you know, uh chastising Rod down on poor Susan when Lewis is practically drooling over his pagan sorcery goddess. <laughs> it's so it was true. So true. So true. Oh well. You know Marsh Wiggle, not Marsh Walla. Marsh I Wiggle. I like Marsh Walla. It's better. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, being a better... Well, sounds sounds was... like a marshmallow that's gone wrong. Also, like, uh, Puddle Glum was a wallower, not a wiggler. You know, by nature. So. Yeah. So you're better coming up with names than C.S. Lewis. So is everybody else on the planet. <laughs> harsh, <laughs> Harsh but fair. Harsh but fair. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, are we going to play more? Or, oh, God, no. We're really over time. We're way over time. I'm like afraid. we're, yeah, we're going to have to come back time. next week for more Freddy Parker's Frontier Pharmacist. If you want more Freddy Parker's Frontier Pharmacist. So what I'm what I'm curious about, based on the last mm-hmm. couple episodes, is that you seem to have a plan for something, but I don't know what it is. You just. Keep collecting shit, and uh, there's. I don't. Well, know. I have to. I have to reassume my my uh, persona of being a gunslinger, which means I have to put my ensemble back together, and I have to get my gun ready, and I have to practice. So what the fuck is the pie for, man? Find That's out next. An week. Excellent question. <laughs> Find out next week. Maybe if we get that far and don't get sidetracked answering uh, questions or just podcasting. That's not an invitation to not give us pharmacists, by the way. Oh, God, no. Give us the far- Give us more pharmacists. This is our content. People. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah. You know yeah. what? Like, Th- yeah. that's fine. You know what you're in for when you're here now. And it if you don't fun. now, you do. It would be fun to do a whole podcast where we just talk about sports, but Matt has to do it every time anyway. He's just in constant torment. <laughs> I will eventually ruin it. <laughs> I, I, I promise. I mean, I would do. I. It will just happen. I. I it would be great. Yeah, like I think like, it would be entertaining to do a, a sports podcast where Alex and I are doing our best to not be ruined by Matt's disdain for the sports. Or, or just like, just like, um, cause like we, we get like a guest on who's like really passionate <laughs> no, about it. And no. like Matt's, Matt's like, he's, he's upset cause he hates the subject, but he's not an asshole. So he's not going to be mean to this person. So he's just like gripping the arms of his chair with white knuckles and just, just patiently listening. Oh, be, be great. I'm gonna ask a few times. Who is this for? Who is this podcast for? Who is this? Who's listening to this? I don't know who would ever listen to this. 
I don't know. Our regular audience who I apparently don't think tolerates so. whatever the fuck we do. <laughs> I don't that's, know uh, if that's, that's a, true. That's a great question, Matt. Uh, we'll circle back to that. So uh, <laughs> tell me more about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I know far more about cricket than I ever assumed that I would, having made a uh, game for uh, Disney ITV's uh, uh, Premier League way back in the day. Would look, that's great. <laughs> so uh, tune in next week for cricket. I'm I might not be back, guys. This might be my last show. <laughs> it's it's it's. <laughs> so rare to find something that makes Matt so sincerely angry. But, do, but do, and it's, <laughs> it's funny because like, I, I also am the same. Like I, I really do hate sports so much, but I think I enjoy Matt's discomfort <laughs> as much as I hate sports. It like, it breaks even. Like, I think I could actually host a sports podcast if Matt was doing it with me, because like, on the one hand, it's like boring, tedious sports stuff, but then like the, I'd just be invigorated by how like just tired and angry Matt is the whole time. <laughs> I just, I, I have kids, and my time is so limited. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just don't have time for that. I don't. I just don't. There is something <laughs> offensive about the concept of a pastime. Of a thing that you do to whittle your time away. What am I going to do with all this useless, useless and, time? And, and like, look, don't misunderstand me. I made the choice to have kids. I know what it meant. I knew I wasn't going to have any free time. I understand that. I get that. I, I, I get that. I don't need I don't need to be schooled. And the fact that, you know, I, I mean, it's my own choice. But listen. Oh, Matt's a, Matt's a responsible, self-sacrificing individual. For yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. But I still got to live with the fact that my time is so valuable compared to what it was. <laughs> and I just don't have time to talk about sports. I just don't. It's a choice I made. Oh, objectively, like, your time is, like, kind of the one thing you can never get back. And it is <laughs> such a fucking outrage that someone wants to, like, wants you to watch or talk about, like, millionaires chasing an inflatable ball around a square of grass. <laughs> Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect anybody who doesn't like this show to watch it. I wouldn't just, make just, them do that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to them. It would be a show only for a really weird and devoted subset of our current fan base. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't expect anybody to watch this show unless they're into it. Which is a, true. Which is you know a weird and 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 subset a strange subset of people. And uh, we love you for it you know yeah if they were here for the game like they'd have left to go watch the game get played by somebody else uh, i think i think that's happened numerous occasions yeah i think we've lost Almost so certainly. many people i think they've subscribed they're like i can get into this and then they just don't watch us anymore because we just don't play the fucking game <laughs> yeah I mean, we do yeah, probably also but, uh, like we we every single week if we're like tired or angry we just let that Call the shots. Those feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like there's an edge to me tonight that I don't enjoy. I don't think it's I don't think it's good. Also <laughs> also like I spotted it earlier and yeah. I stoked I stoked it like a campfire. <laughs> I just decided I would be like a human bellows. Just like, oh, there's a spark of something there. I wanna see that become a conflagration. <laughs> I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to be the happy marshmallow. I'm not supposed to be this. I just, you know, it just, uh, life, you know, guys, you know, life, you know. I know. You understand. You understand. Been there. Been there recently. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, you know, next week is a brand new story. Uh, If we show up, you never know what you're going to get. So. It's true. You know, all right. Uh, Stick and stay, though. Do your best. Stick and stay, team. You know. If it's if it's getting colder and winter's coming where you are in the southern hemisphere, bundle up, get some of those recipes into you. If it's a really hot day, go make yourself a lasagna. Jam a lasagna into you on a hot day. Go, <laughs> just make it happen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, 
That sounds but like an ordeal. I love I love so much about this show. Like, what I really love about it is that, like, whatever happens to me in this next week, I know that someone somewhere just shat themselves with laughter over <laughs> how angry Matt is about this right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, someone's going to be going about their business. Yeah, just, you know, having their own life with their own challenges. And they'll be like, oh, good, there's another episode of Level Zero. And then it's just, like, like two hours of Luke and I just, like, <laughs> we, we could electrocute Matt and cause him <laughs> less discomfort. And, like, that's that's just so funny. And it's also just awesome that, like, there's a stranger out there, or a relative stranger, you know, just, like, who's just, like, losing their shit on a bus or something because of how angry Matt is. And, like, and, like don't get me wrong. I'm still having a fantastic time. Like, I am. But, yeah, I'm really mad. Also, I'm both. I'm both. It's great. And also, I, and one thing you need to understand about sort of about me and Alex is that we sort of enjoy horrible things. <laughs> like we don't, we we kind of we have a taste for for horrible things and feeling gross and feeling terrible. It's uh, I don't know what it is. There's just a certain I have a love for it. Uh, it's on, it is on so- one level. Like it or not, it is so much of your life. So if you can learn to savor it, you know, I do like, like a fine yeah. wine. Yeah, I like feeling a little bad sometimes, just a little bit. I mean, that's that's what wine is just ruined grapes, and people learn to savor it. You know? Yeah. No, that's true. That, that's that's what it is. That's life. It's good. It's good. And I, I like a lot of good things happened to me today. I should be in a better mood. Yeah. Anyway, everybody, we we love you. We miss you. We hope to see you soon. We should have a world meetup <laughs> with like with like a weird little ten person convention. With, <laughs> yeah, uh, we should uh, we should do a, a meetup sometime. Um, we'll have to hold it somewhere neutral where everyone can get to. We'll have to do New York, like the Antarctic, which will be great for twelve up, but really terrible oh. for everybody else. We'll, we'll all go to the Antarctic and become weird Arctic mummies. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Our international mummy meetup, uh, first and only, happening uh, this September. Do we get fl- Level zero mummy-thon. Do, do, we get, do we get flagged as a cult if we encourage our followers <laughs> to ritualistically die? <laughs> yes, I believe we do. It's all right. We can't Maybe. do we we can't do it in September anyway because that's Carl Timber. If uh, it's true. we 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 want you all to stay alive for as long as you can because uh, you know you are each of you a treasure. But if you do think you're about to become an accidental mummy, just really quick, take a piece of cardstock if you have it and write "You found me" on it in big happy letters and just hold that up. Yeah, uh, although probably the mummification process. Will require that the cardstock will be gone. By the time it's that you're found. It's rare. It's rarely sudden. Yeah. It's if really you have a stone tablet that you could carve instead, that would be. If you could really quick just carve out a stone tablet. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go now, probably. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Probably a good idea. Option is just to have a stone tablet with "You found me" on it. Yeah, just hold and on to that just in case. Yeah, for for that <laughs> get eventuality. A, get a brass plaque made up, or plastic. That'll 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 <laughs> definitely last. Yeah, that's true. Em, embossed plastic. Embossed plastic. You found me. Uh, it's also trashier, which is nice. Uh, uh, we'll see you guys next time. I'm, I'm really trying. I'm trying to get out of here. I really am. Yeah. I'm trying to end this. Let's let's, re- let's release our captives. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm pulling for you. I know we can get you out of here if we try. <laughs> we'll see you. We'll see you next week, probably. All right, bye, everybody. Stick and stay. See you. Stick, Stick and stay. stay. Bye. Oh my god, I'm gonna die.